Summer Wells, viewer questions and comments, part three, take, I don't know what take are we on, you reckon? Six. <laughs> I, we haven't managed to get it much past the introduction yet, have we? No. So, I, if either one of us screws up from this point going forward, we're just going to roll with it. Yeah, good idea. Because this has been troublesome, to say the least. Yeah. So, let's see. Our first question, I think this is a good one. All I know is if you watch the video of Chris McDonough interviewing H near the end, Chris asked H what he thinks happened, and he said that Grandma lost her mind. Then it kind of trails off. What do you think he meant by that? Uh, I don't know. H H's responses to a lot of questions didn't seem like they made a ton of sense. And that was another one because it seems like for whatever reason, he went that route just in, out of nowhere. They wasn't talking about Grandis or anything. And he just flung that statement out there. It seemed odd to me. Yeah, it was kind of out of the blue when I watched it. And it didn't really answer any questions. It just made everybody have more questions about that topic. And I don't think anybody else really brought it up the whole interview. No. It was really strange how he just pulled Grandis out of thin air, made it sound like some, she had done something, and it's like they weren't going in that direction with anything. It was really seemed like an out-of-place statement. I agree. For sure. Maybe he didn't know what to say and just threw that in. I'm not for sure what, what he was thinking, but it was kind of strange, definitely. Seemed like if nothing else, H thought Grand thought Grandis was kind of sketchy, didn't it? Yeah, definitely. That's what I was thinking, too. Um, I guess we'll go on to the next question. Now, this is around Rose Bly, um, Candace's sister. So, uh, the question is, why would her husband file for divorce after just a few weeks of her gone missing? That's just odd to me. Also, Candace and Dawn are never actually asked if they were involved or not or question do you think that's kind of strange or what do you think about that i think there's a lot of strange things um as far as dawn and candace they say they weren't in the area anywhere at the time when uh she went missing but you know they say a lot of stuff that who knows I can't find any way to nail down their location exactly when she went missing. So I, I'm not sure what to think about Dawn and Candace as far as how is it possible they could have been in the area or not. If you look at the Wisconsin um, court uh, website, there's a lot of arrests all throughout there, but it seems like there's nothing real, real close to 2009 when Rose went missing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I do think it's weird her husband filed divorce in two weeks after she's gone missing. You would think he'd be out there looking for her, you know, longer than two weeks. It's like he gave up on her and just said, heck with it and filed for divorce. Yeah. Don't you think that's strange? Two weeks into her being missing, that seems awful fast to go ahead and file for divorce. But, you know, who knows what his train of thought was, though. Yeah. Maybe he wasn't um, invested in the missing thing. Maybe he was thinking that she had run off. Yeah, maybe with, well, I shouldn't say that with another man. I don't really know what she did, you know, in her life. But maybe they weren't getting along at that time also, you know. There might have been a lot going on behind the scenes we didn't know about. Well, you you don't know too many happily married couples where one of them is going out to the bar with their cousin for drinks. And that's like, it's odd to me. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm not a jealous person at all, but I don't know how happy I'd be with my better half spending their weekends at the bar without me. Things couldn't be going great in their marriage, I wouldn't think. Yeah, I agree. Especially leaving two little babies at home. Yeah, leaving him home with two babies under two years old. But, you know, we don't know what the circumstances were. And um, 
I don't know. It just seems like there's definitely, for him to file that soon is definitely odd. Definitely, I agree. You would think if their relationship was really good in, after her missing for two weeks, he wouldn't be worried about filing for divorce. He'd still be worried about finding his wife. Yeah, that's, I agree, definitely. Um, so, I have another question. Now, it regards Rose, too. Um, you have compared photos of Rose Bly and Rose Meyer. What do you think about the gap in their teeth? Do you think they look a lot alike, or what do you think? Oh, I think there's a huge resemblance. But I also think I'm sure law enforcement has noticed said resemblance, and I am sure they have visited Miss Meyer to determine, you know, is there a possibility she could be Rose Bly? Yeah, um, I've seen the two pictures also, and they look a lot alike. But I think if there's something to it, you know, they would already have brought that forward, that evidence, or, you know, what there would have been more regarding that, I think. Rose Meyer kind of disappeared after the beginning. She was there for like the first month or two. She seemed like she was a huge super fan of Dawn and Candace. I think she was actually Grandis's friend, and that's how she had whatever worked her way into the situation but i know she was out there on all kinds of stuff there at the beginning and then mm -hmm. i don't know if uh, the social media backlash ran her off or what but she, you know you don't hear nothing out of her anymore yeah i haven't heard anything about her for a while too i don't but know what happened she looks a lot like rose there's no doubt about it a lot but i'm sure law enforcement's if we think it, they've already thought it, I'm sure, and yeah, checked into it. Definitely, I agree. Um, so, the next question is, <clears throat> I think FBI and TBI could do a better job of questioning Don and Candace. What do you think about that situation? I would hope so. I, I mean, you, I, I'm not being mean or rude or anything, but you would think somebody that was really um, experienced at interrogation could have got something out of somebody, you know? Yeah, it seems to me like they've only done a couple interviews that I, I know of. There might have been more, but not a lot. Usually when somebody goes missing, they bring in, you know, the family several times and re-question just to, you know, if they can't find any leads. Sometimes that helps, but... They haven't done much. Well, we don't know either how yeah. many interviews they've had. We don't know what, right. what they've had. But apparently they didn't get much out of those interviews because we seem like we haven't went nowhere in quite a while with the case. Yeah. I think it seems to me like they're almost hoping everybody will just go on and forget about the case. I, that's bad to say, but that's what I think. Yeah, it seems like... Law enforcement is definitely um, being awful slack with the reins if they do have something, don't it? Yeah, definitely. I think, though, it, it's a. We actually don't know if Don and Candace are uh, too willing to go into any more questioning either, because, I mean, Candace wouldn't even let Dr. Phil ask any questions, so I don't think she's going to be too keen on going and asking questions for the FBI or TBI or, you know, Ronnie Lawson, any of them, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah, Candace I'm, definitely don't like answering questions. You know how she made such a fuss about being interrogated. I'm doubting she's going to be interrogated by cops anymore. I mean, she doesn't have to answer questions. Right. You know? Yeah. My opinion, I think they blew Dr. Phil's show. That could have got Summer's name out there, and we got a lot more information, and it didn't go nowhere. Oh. That, that was awful. Dr. Phil just made Don more bold by saying that he didn't think Don knew anything or was involved in any way. Yeah, I don't think they even should have done the show unless they got more out of them or had a, you know, I don't think, I don't know. It might have helped a little bit, but not much. And somebody else made a good point about the Dr. Phil show. Anytime there's somebody with any kind of substance abuse problem, Dr. Phil always offers to send them to the ranch or to rehab or, you know, somewhere to help them. And he never even 
I mean, we don't know if he did it behind the scenes, but that whole episode just seemed like it was built around Don and Candace not cooperating and Dr. Phil taking any little thing he could get, basically. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And I was looking forward to it, and you were too. Oh, yeah. I thought Dr. Phil was going to Jedi mind trick somebody, and we'd have an answer after the show. But yeah. Dr. Yeah. Phil seemed extremely... How should... Unlike himself, usually. You know, usually he does a better job. I don't know. I think he was just trying to meet whatever, you know, they wanted to be on the show, or they probably gave him a... You know, I, I'm not going to do this or that. Yeah, know. but usually he don't take that kind of shit. He don't let people make requests of him as yeah. to how things are going to be handled. You know, how many times have you seen somebody on Dr. Phil that's like, I don't want to talk about this, and he doesn't care. Yeah, he's like, you either talk about what we need to talk about or you can leave. <laughs> exactly, and he, man, I've never seen him treat somebody with such kid gloves like he did the two of them. Definitely, I agree. Didn't even say, hey, you want a polygraph test, to, you know. Uh, he, he's quick to offer the polygraph test, too. Yeah, so I, I thought the whole thing was odd, definitely. Yeah, don't get me wired up about that shit again i spent two months ranting on videos about how disappointed i was let's move on from that okay i forgot this one when we were talking about rose but this one's about rose too what are your thoughts that rose is possibly in the federal witness protection program was it she su supposed to testify against her uh, uncle uh, I don't know, man. I don't think, I think if it was a federal witness protection program issue that the cops wouldn't be 10 years later coming out and begging for leads and all that stuff. I think they, and you know, is it, that's, I've never heard of it done that way. You know, where they act like you're missing. Yeah. They usually just take you and hide you, implant you somewhere and that's it. They don't usually pretend like you're missing and all that. I think if that was the case, they would definitely have, wouldn't have had that big blow up for the 10 year anniversary where they made a little movie with Grandus and press conference and all that good stuff. I'm not saying it's not possible, right? but I think it's less likely. Yeah. Scenario. It's very unlikely. Yeah, that's my feeling too. But who knows? Because we don't really have a lot of answers. So it was a good question, you know. I mean, it's in the realm of possibility, but I, I just really yeah. feel like when they did the, you know, put all that into the case at the ten year anniversary, that for sure the sheriff would know what was going on, and he wouldn't be going through all that as a saving face or whatever. Yeah. I agree. Uh, I have a, <clears throat> this is really a comment, but I thought it was a good point um, I would share. You're right on which not believing that Candace walked Summer to the water and the front door. Those are self-repair statements to make Candace look like a good parent to cover up the fact that she usually is not. What do you feel about that comment? Oh, I feel like that's exactly <laughs> right. And I think Candace in her story is telling what she thinks a good parent would have done. Yeah. But even a good parent would not have worried about her daughter walking 20 foot to the house when they live out in the middle of nowhere on 11 acres of land. You know, I think there's that. And I think the washing her hands after playing with or planting the cactuses and stuff. I think all that was just part of the story yeah i think her story would have been more believable you know even if she said yeah she's out in the yard playing for a little while and then you know 10 20 minutes later i went out to look for her and she wasn't there but i think she i don't know that story you can tell she's not a helicopter parent so yeah but it, it just makes her not as believable I think. it makes the story less believable yeah and you know <laughs> i always thought it was weird how dawn talks about that basement door was to be locked at all times. I don't think many people that live out in the country like they do worry about their doors being locked at all times. Yeah, definitely living that far out. 
But he wants everybody to think that that's another, that's just like the walking to the door. It's, I think, to make it look better in their minds. And I don't think it does. I think it just makes it look more fishy, if anything. Yeah, I think it does, too. It made everything, the story not as believable, I think. She should have just gave the, you know, the right story if she didn't do anything and not made up anything. Well, I'm not saying she didn't make it up, but you know what I mean. Yeah, she tried to make the story sound like she thought other people would would have reacted to the situation, you know? Right. And she killed herself by giving that two to five minute time frame that Summer was out of her sight. Yeah, because that's really hard to believe, two to five minutes. It's it's a <laughs> lot to, to, to believe. Yeah. It really is. Yeah, definitely. Um, I have a, let's see. This is really kind of a comment or how she feels, but um, it says, it's the behavior afterwards that seals their guilt. Never has the mother came out to beg the public for help. Neither has the grandmother either. What do you think um, well, about that? I, I think Candace is just not a very... She's not the type of person that's going to be on conferences and interviews and stuff like that a lot. You can tell she she seems uncomfortable talking to people. Yeah. You know, I don't think that points more toward her guilt. I think, though, it is extremely suspicious how Grandis has never once been on anything and gave any statement. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It makes you have questions about her. Uh, well, the problem I have with her is when she finally did make a statement, her statement was, I don't like you people calling me grandis. <laughs> yeah, really. Whose daughter's been missing for months and months, or granddaughter, and they come out and don't mention the granddaughter. They say, I don't like being called grandis. Yeah, you would be, you know, you would think she would be saying, my granddaughter's missing, y'all need to help find her. I don't know what happened to her. I mean, I, I have never seen missing parents and missing families come off as poorly as these do. I think that's got a ton to do with why her case gets so much publicity. Yeah, I agree, too, because there's so many strange things. Can, can you imagine John Benet's dad or mom being on a live stream, intoxicated and just talking crazy? Or anybody's, Madeline McCann's parents, you know? Mm -hmm. And yeah. everybody's like, ah, oh, I don't understand why that gets so much attention. It's not fair to the other missing children. Well, you know, I tell you right now, if I wanted a bunch of attention, I would follow the Don and Candace playbook because it's definitely going to bring tons of attention to the case. Yeah. Now, the reason they're doing it, I do, don't think is for that purpose. Right. But I tell you, it's brought tons of attention to the case, if nothing else. They haven't helped their image one little bit. Yeah, but I agree. Hey, what are we talking about right now? Summer. Exactly. Thousands of people that care about her and, you know, want to find out what happened to her. So, yeah, that is a good thing, you know. That's why it's my dream that she be found and understand how big of a fuss was made about her disappearance. Right. Definitely. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, it would. Yep, because she... She was important, you know. Yeah. Definitely. She is important yeah, to she a is. lot of people right now. Yeah. And they would like to see her home. Definitely. Uh, so, this is really just a comment, but I thought it would be a good comment. If the heat is kept on them, and I pray it is, Candace will finally break under pressure. Do you think she will? I don't know. I think the heat's been on her for quite a while. She ain't broke yet. Yeah, definitely. You know? Yeah. And I think now it's probably even more unlikely because she doesn't have to speak to police anymore if she doesn't want to. Right. It's apparent that they don't have anything on them that great 
unless we revert back to they're trying to catch bigger fish. But if that isn't the case, then I question if they have much of anything. Yeah, I agree with that, definitely. Uh, let's see here. So, I have another kind of question comment. When Don said he wouldn't want the person who caused Summer's disappearance to go to prison, all I thought was that he said that because he was protecting Candace. Well, you know, it could be that. Or it could be he's protecting number one. Yeah. Himself. That's what I was thinking. Too. But I think it's definitely a. It's the most odd take I've ever heard a parent when they're asked that question. You ask me that, I'm gonna be like, "Well, uh, you probably gonna have to edit this, but I'd like to break, 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 break their neck and break, 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 break." Yeah, definitely. I would definitely. You could tell the answer. I mean. <sighs> That's another one of them things where I feel like they think what they're telling is going to make them look better, and it really just is killing their image. Because no father of a missing little girl is going to act like they... And he went further than that, too. Oh, yeah. He talked about jail was so hard, and he don't think he could wish that on the person. I mean, he really put it out there. He almost acted like whoever done that, he'd be willing to shake their hand and tell them, I forgive you, I forgive you without any you know, um, anger or anything. And I don't know who would believe that uh, somebody that loves their child would be that passive to somebody that took their child. Yeah, I totally agree. You know, even me as a mother, I would, you know, definitely tell them the truth of what I think should happen to whoever was involved. You would. wouldn't be worried about that person adjusting no. in jail, would no, you? No, no, definitely not. I, no. I'd want them to get adjusted in jail, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. But, see, that that makes... His, you know, his story is strange, too. How he answers questions. And, not and see, that, that's part of how he tries to play the um, religious person. I think that's why he, he molded his story of what he wanted to happen to that person that way. Because he still wants you to think that he's this super religious person. And, you know, if you heard interviews with anybody around him, nobody seems to think that's the case. I sure don't anymore. So. Uh, no, you can't be a commandment keeper and getting um, intoxicated on a nightly basis and drinking and driving and, you know, all the other stuff. And, you know, that's what we have seen. Yeah. You know? Yeah. The more I watch it, you know, I can tell, like, he can turn it off and on, too, like, if he wants to be religious or not. Yeah. He, I you mean, see some of these videos, you know. Who sounds like an awful. evangelist. Yeah. Then some videos, he's totally acting like a Hell's Angel yeah, member. Yeah, totally opposite. Not that I don't love Hell's Angels members. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me see if we have any other questions. It's false. Okay. Why would they schedule search two while they conducted search one? This is what I can't understand. Or did they not want to find her the first time? Well, no. I think search two was just because the conditions were going to be so much better. There wasn't going to be as much underbrush. It's easier to get through the woods and stuff like that. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too because all the... High grass and stuff has died down, and you it, know, you get to different places, see different stuff, and it'd be easier to see evidence, you know, like a, a shoe or you know, a sock or you know, something smaller with all the underbrush gone. Any evidence that was there would be much easier to locate. I'm yeah. not going to knock them for that, no, you know, no, I don't think I really don't feel like. There was much point of the search, though. Yeah, me either. I really feel like, I mean, you can tell they they did a very thorough job in two weeks after she originally was gone. They really did an excellent job searching. Yeah. 
I just don't understand. Like, I would be out looking for her every day. Even if I thought it was a good possibility she was, you know, kidnapped, I would still be looking over my land. I'm just talking about Dawn and Candace. I would be out there searching all the time. Oh, yeah. Because I couldn't live with myself. I would have to have something to do. And they don't even seem like they're interested in I, uh, searching would be all I would do. Yeah, me searching too. and hanging flyers. Yep. You know, Definitely. and it, it seems like they're so in love with the abduction theory that they don't think there's any point in doing anything else. Right. Like Don seems to think whoever did it took her, and I've heard him say this quite a few times, way out of the area and all that. Well, I don't know that I could convince myself 100% that she couldn't be around the house. So I would have to search at least the basic area. You know, I guarantee I would have already combed at least a square mile radius around my house. And I mean combed. There wouldn't be a leaf of grass I wouldn't have overturned around my house before I gave up on the thought that she could be around. Yeah. That's the part I, I think is strange. She went to that conclusion right away. Oh. And you know where they live. It's up. It's nowhere, you know, somewhere. Bro. Nothing's around. So it's really strange. Myself, I would believe that she wandered off, really. But I, I would I would have believed that before I would have believed that out there in rural uh Ben Hill Road, somebody had come upon her in a two to five minute time window and made out of there without me seeing them, without my mother seeing them, without the three boys seeing them, right. without the dog seeing them. Because regardless what you want to believe about the dogs, there was at least a couple there. I guarantee it. it all 15 of them didn't run off at the same time. Definitely. That's why I have so much trouble with the abductor theory. There is just so much that has to go perfect mm -hmm. to pull that off. Yeah, I agree. And Don might have, like, when he made the phone call or when he first did his first interview, um, I don't know. He said that right off. Well, oh, he said that he says in every interview when he got home and seen the boys looking and the neighbor, he <laughs> knew. She was abducted. He knew it. Yeah, that's very strange. It's. It, I keep on coming back to that for some reason. What oh, do, I do too. What do y'all guys think? Put something in the comments. What you think about that situation? Yeah, what do you think about the fact that from second one, Dawn has been, not entertained any other theory than stranger abduction, which, as we all know, the statistics are the most against. It is the most rare thing there is. Mm -hmm. and he won't even act like it could have possibly been somebody they knew. Right. I mean, he won't even accept that. That's what really gets me. He's kind of loosened up a couple times and said he, he's made it out like it could have been somebody Candace knew. Right. Nothing connected to him, though. Oh, yeah. He didn't dare want to imply that it could be anything, whether purpose or not, that relates to him. Very strange. Okay. Where are we going next with it? I think. I have a couple of questions regarding Allie. So, the first one, why isn't anyone checking Allie out any more than they have? She's a felon. Uh, well, I'm sure they have been checking her out. I think that's probably, you know, that they went over her with a fine-tooth comb when they realized that her son was with Candace the day, that day. You know, I'm sure they haven't left any stone unturned when it comes to the initial circle of friends like Allie, Jody, Sue, Robin, Dave Dotson. The ones that we know about, I am sure, have been thoroughly vetted. Yeah. I wish they would have said what Allie's felony was for. I didn't know that. Did you know that? No. If anybody knows, put it down in the comments. Yeah, if you know what Allie had a uh, felony for, let us know. And what do y'all got? What do you guys think about Allie? Uh, the next thing I find odd is she says that her phone wasn't charged. 
that day. Do you think that was kind of strange? Oh, you know, I think it is. I think that is a nugget right there that I pulled out of a video a couple, well, a week or so ago. When I thought about that, how she used her alibi as being at the grand, at her friend's grandson's football practice. And, oh, guess what? Her phone was off, so she couldn't have been, uh, you know, they couldn't use the data off her phone to prove where she was. I think that is such a crazy coincidence that that happened right around the time Summer come up missing. Yeah, that was strange. You think, too, her being in a game, you know, sometimes me as a mom, it gets boring. You think she will on her phone to look at. You know, you don't think it would be dead. Oh, yeah. I never thought about that. If you're sitting at football practice... It's not a game. It's oh, practice. practice sorry. Watching them do jumping jacks. and that's a, Practice ain't exciting. Trust me. I've watched six years of it. Yeah. Well, it's kind of exciting for me because my son plays. But, you know, her friend's grandson, you know, she's not that into practice. She would have really wanted her phone to play some Candy Crush or watch some TikToks, you know. Right. You wouldn't have rolled up with a dead phone, would you? No, mine would have been fully charged. Sometimes, you know, it'll pass time a little bit quicker. When yeah. Going on. So I thought that was strange. Yeah, it's strange because she ain't like, it's, you know, she wasn't just so into football practice that she was entertained by. Yeah, I sure wouldn't be. What else you got? Uh, let me take a look. Whatever you think of. All right, what do you got left? Uh, I thought this would be interesting. This is about Grandis. Um, how can Grandis walk down to the water when her knee was bothering her? Have you thought about that? I've thought about why would she have done it? Why would she have went into the grocery store? Why would she have went in to them other places? If you, you would think if your knee is bad off as they pretended it was yeah you definitely wouldn't be doing any more walking than you absolutely had to yeah you know for me to go to a hospital or er and sit there and wait forever something really has to be bothering me so you would think you know she wouldn't want to be getting out of the car and doing a lot of activity so i thought that was really strange too i think it's strange too how hunter mentioned in his interview that her knee had gotten hurt because the boys had been kicking it while they were in Gatlinburg. Yeah. Why in the world would they be kicking her knee? <laughs> Why would, how would he know that? Yeah, he wasn't even there, was he? I, I guess didn't... maybe it came up in discussion that day, but still, I thought, I thought that was really odd. Yeah, it is. Unless... Because Grandis don't look like the type of woman that's going to let a kid sit there and kick her in the knee. No. That's what I was thinking, too, when I first seen her. <laughs> and we all know there is major suspicion about the trip to Gatlinburg. Yeah. I think a certain someone seems to think that was kind of like a uh, pre-meeting type yeah. situation. See what they were buying. Ain't that what your buddy mm -hmm. said? Yeah. Yeah. And like you said, she nailed the Valo case, so right. you never know. And, that, you know, there's a admittance of the trip to Gatlinburg, so we know that that, that happened. happened. Yeah. Well, I think there's actually film of that. It seems like Don's, like, talking smack up on the merry-go-round or something I seen one time. Yeah. So, yeah, that trip did happen, so I didn't see that. But, yeah, I thought it was odd. I think maybe it... You know, if they did have a story, they were trying to get everybody on the same page. That was part of the story about her knee. You know, that's how it got hurt. So they would know, you know, if somebody asked, said the boys kicked her knee. Yeah, I mean, that just seems like that's trying to make the story too complex to me. Yeah. You know, yeah, I would have just, I mean, you know, only person that really needs to know that would be Grandis, why her knee was hurting, you know? Yeah. I agree with you. Um, she's not the type of woman, well, she don't look like the type of woman that would let a bunch of young boys sit there and kick her knee. So. You know, and they, and somebody also, I seen a comment a while back, who talked about how expensive Gatlinburg is. 
Oh, yeah. It's expensive. Cause we can vouch for that. We went a couple weeks ago. so We still got a big chunk of credit card to pay off from our trip to Gatlinburg. Yeah, so it's not cheap. Definitely. I agree there. And their, their family is larger than ours. Yeah. They have one more kid than we do. And I'm telling you, you ain't eating in Gatlinburg for less than 60 bucks. Right. Yeah. Definitely. You know? Yeah. Of course, I don't know how they planned their trip. I didn't hear if they stayed or they just visited for the day or whatever. Yeah, I didn't. I don't really know about that. But you, you're you looking for a hunt. You're looking at an easy 100, 150 bucks just going into Gatlinburg. Yep. Nothing cheap about it. No. But a lot of people seem to think that was fishy, the timing of the Gatlinburg trip. Yeah. I think it would help if Grant, Grandis came forth and answered some questions, even did like an interview, you know. It would take a lot of suspicion off of her. You know? Oh, I know. Cause, you know, it's like when you watch a trial. I always think it's suspicious when the person on trial don't want to take the stand and answer questions. Yeah. I think anytime somebody is just stone cold silent about anything like that, it makes them look guilty. Yeah. When it uh, And her with the comment about not wanting to be called grandest made her look heartless, I thought. Yeah, she came forward, but that's all she had to say was, quit calling me grandest. I mean, that just made made her look so cold to me. Yeah. First chance she got, she's gone. So I thought it was weird. You think she would be there supporting Candace through the hard time? Yeah, because if you watch that, that thing on Rose where they shot that little mini movie with Grandis as the star, you know, she acted legitimately destroyed over the fact Rosa disappeared so she would know how hard that is yeah firsthand you know what Candace was going through so I thought that was really strange even if they didn't have a close relationship you know you think she would be there somewhere. well they're close enough that she lives on their property yeah five feet from her I guess or definitely yeah so you know they're fairly close it's not like they're just straight up strangers right um, so I always thought that was weird. What do you guys think? Well, y'all let us know about any of the things we talked about. Comment below, and it was good. Uh, good seeing you guys. Yeah, and I guess we'll see you later. Um, y'all have a good day. Bye. Bye. Bye.